These oh! are the 20 wildest moments in NHL history. Look out for oh my. And at number 20, Patrick Rua forgot he was supposed to be the goaltender. Rangers with a 4-1 lead. Hey, Patrick, look at this. What is this? He's out of his mind. There's a penalty now. He carried the puck over center ice. You can't do that as a goalie. He doesn't realize it. Yeah, my man just wanted to hit the clip of the century. But dangling through the defense isn't the only crazy thing NHL goalies have done. Because at number 19, these two goalies took their beef to a whole new level when they started throwing hands in the middle of the game. Try to keep them separated. And he won't be able to do that as away they go. Emery with the right hand free and he's hammering away on Holtby. Capital's not coming to his aid at this point as Emery is just having his way with Holtby. Well, this has been going on. Damn, Holtby got his ass whooped. Now I know why he had to leave Washington. I'd be mad too if I got humiliated like that in front of my own fans. But not as mad as this coach at number 18. You know, some coaches get pretty angry when their team sucks. But I've never seen any coach start throwing stuff onto the ice. I mean, except this one time. The New Jersey Devils coach got so mad, he threw a whole bench onto the ice. What are you thinking? Oh my, oh boy. What was going through his head? And of course, Doing all that got him fired. But nothing gets me more fired up than the weirdest Stanley Cup winning goal of all time. It was game six of the 2010 Stanley Cup Finals between Chicago Blackhawks and Philadelphia Flyers. Chicago was leading the series three to two and were one win away from winning the cup. The game went into overtime where the best American born player ever, Patrick Kane, stepped up. Crazy. Kane was the only one who knew it was a goal. The whole Flyers bench was in a shock. But Marc-Andre Fleury has me in a shock. Because he's been acting out recently. You know, Fleury has always been kind of weird. And that's why he's one of the most loved goalies in the league. But recently he's been attacking players on shootouts. Cicarello goal, but Art in. I never really got a shot away as Fleury poke checks it away. Oh, again, just great patience there by Marc-Andre Fleury. He did not bite for the fake shot here. Just kept his balance there and was able to just trip him up. Yeah, Fleury's just welcoming Bedard to the league. That's great. But Fleury wasn't done, because he did the same thing to the very next shooter as well. Taylor Hall looking to tie it for Chicago. Pope checked again, and another trip by Fleury. The two referees are looking at each other. Oh, it was almost like an identical play there. Mark andre Fleury gets a sick caught in. Fleury might have just found the new cheat code to saving penalty shots. I mean, at least Fleury is just attacking players. Even he isn't wild enough to attack refs. Because at number 15, this next player assaulted a ref. Going on his left ear, has Clutterbuck almost in the bank of a bench. Oh, the linesman took a punch from Clutterbuck. Uh-oh. That won't go over well as Clutterbuck hit Darren Gibbs right in the face. Know exactly what he just did, I think. They break it up. God damn, how the refs stay on his feet. That even hurt me. But I bet number 14 would hurt even more, cause NHL players' shots have become crazy fast. So fast that they are even breaking the glass behind the net. To McInnes, he shoots. Damn, my man almost gave the announcer a stroke with that laser. That's wild, but not as wild as the Flyers mascot. Yeah, this guy, cause he is for sure the craziest mascot in the NHL when he's not streaking in the middle of the game. I'm pretty streaking, pretty back here. He's spending his time bullying children or I don't know, fighting goalies.
Yeah, man, I told you, he's crazy. But at number 12, Trevor Zegras has secretly been rizzing up baddies with Michigans. Yeah, Zegras is known for scoring ridiculous goals. And in his first game back from an injury, a female reporter asked him for a special gift. And you just know Zegras was on board. Of course he was. Just look at the guy. Oh, I've been asked what is my Christmas wish this year. A Michigan or lacrosse or alley-oop or anything you'll give us. Can you deliver, Z? I'm going to try. I'm going to try. That's all I can do. Trevor takes it in behind the net. He scores! A lacrosse goal! Exactly what Alan Lozov asked for. Well, thanks for coming out. We're glad to have you back. And I got to say thank you for delivering my Christmas wish. Anything for you. Damn, Z, you had her blushing. Leave some for the rest of us. Cause that ain't even the first time Zegris has had the ladies go crazy. In fact, at number 11, after giving one of the nastiest apples I've ever seen, he had the whole NHL world glazing him. I mean, everybody except Tortorella. Zegers, here you go. Oh, look at this. Oh, he turned it down. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's nasty. But now that we enter the top 10 wildest moments in NHL history, let's take things to a whole new level. Like the time a 33-year-old enforcer with only five goals in his whole career became the MVP. Yeah. In 2016, the NHL decided to open the All-Star Game fan voting, which meant that fans all around the world could now decide who got into the All-Star Game. And as a prank, fans all around the globe had an idea to vote a 6'8 enforcer, John Scott, who was only known for fighting, to the All-Star Game. And even though Bettman and the NHL hated it, Scott received the most votes of all the players and therefore was selected as the Team Pacific captain. The fans were hyped as the prank actually went through. But nobody could have guessed what happened next. But not as wild as number 9. Because an NHL game was played in the middle of the night. Yeah, it was a normal Thursday night. And the game one of the series between Hurricanes and Panthers just started. The arena was packed, and nobody knew they'd be witnessing history tonight. Because this game would be one of the longest ever recorded in NHL history. After 60 minutes, the game was still tied 2-2, so they headed to overtime. The first overtime period went by. No goals. So went the second. Still no goals. And the same story continued throughout the third overtime as well. These fans were literally sleeping in their seats. Nobody just couldn't find the back of the net. And when there was a minute left in the fourth overtime, everybody started to think that the game would never end. But then, a mouth guard chewing kid rose from the shadows and ended the game with 12 seconds left in the fourth overtime. Spanish keeps the puck alive. Kachuk with a shot. He scores! Matthew Kachuk with 12 and 7, 10 seconds remaining in overtime. It was 2 a.m. and the game had lasted over six hours. Damn, imagine being one of those Hurricanes fans. Watch all that just to see Brent Burns choke the whole thing. But one fan I don't feel bad for is the one at number eight. Cause this guy got just what he deserved. And Steve Sullivan, you see him number 26. He gets a stick up around the forehead or near the eye. And as he skates off, look at this fan for the avalanche. Oh, he's giving him a lot of sympathy. Well, things always have a way of working out. Later in the game, the puck comes over the glass and off the noggin of guess who? Well, justice was served. It's the same fan that was taunting Sullivan, and now he's cut. Man, that's hilarious. The fan got hit right in the face. That reminds me of number seven. The time Ty Domi hit a fan in the middle of the game. Yeah, Domi was known for whooping ass back in the day. And while playing a game in Philly, the fans really didn't like him. One fan especially. Because when Domi got a penalty, a fan in the stands started clowning him. And I'll just let you figure out yourself what happened next. A player fighting a fan in the middle of the game. Man, it can't get much wilder than that. Or maybe it can. Because at number six, a referee scored a goal with his dick. He scored some short-handed goals. Well, not the Panthers yet. Oh, oh, oh. deflection of the net. And Peel is down, uh, still on one knee. This one caught him right in the midsection. Look at that. I mean, you can't get a worse break than that. It's impossible to. 
Damn, usually I hate NHL refs, but this one is a legend. And now that we close in the five wildest moments in NHL history, you should do as Matthews does and subscribe to the channel. I'll give you two seconds. Okay, time is up. At number five, the whole city of Vancouver almost burned down because of a hockey game. As we all know, Vancouver is a hockey town. But despite that, the Canucks have okay. always sucked and have never won a cup. So in 2011, when the Canucks fought their way into Game 7 of the Finals, the city of Vancouver were sure that this was their year to finally win the cup. Until they got humiliated on their home ice. Which led to the whole city going nuts. Now, seconds after the game ended, chaos began as rioters started overturning cars. Our crew did not see police anywhere in the beginning to stop it. As the anger over the loss to the Boston Bruins heated up, rioters set fire to the overturned cars, and eventually riot police did move in. Now, police had closed the major bridges into downtown Vancouver during the height of the riot so that people could not get into the heart of the city. Those bridges were reopened by about 2.30 when we arrived in town. We did see in the last hour or so, a number of overturned cars still on the street. We did see quite a lot of broken glass, windows broken out of department stores and banks downtown. People are already starting to clean up, though, and glass repair trucks. Yeah, that's crazy. But what's even crazier to me is that the Toronto Maple Leafs were able to lose a game to a 42-year-old Zamboni driver. In a game between the Hurricanes and Maple Leafs, Carolina's okay. both goalies got injured. Meaning that the only possible solution to continue the game was for Toronto's 42-year-old Zamboni driver David Ayers to jump into Carolina's net. We have word that Dave Ayers, 42 years of age, emergency support goaltender. According to the reports, the highest level of hockey he has played is Junior B, which is a step below Junior A, which is a step below Major Junior. Ayers out to play it. He'll move it. Good job. And of course, the Leafs fans were mad. The Toronto Maple Leafs lost an actual National Hockey League game to a 42-year-old Zamboni driver who works for them! Hey man, chill out! It was an unforgettable moment for Ayers. Another unforgettable moment was number three when the Sabres Jumbotron fell from the ceiling and crashed onto the center ice. It was a game day in Buffalo between the Sabres and Bruins. After the teams had finished their morning skates, a cable snapped on the 40,000 pound scoreboard sending it flying straight to the ice. Luckily, nobody was on the center ice at the time and wasn't hurt. Buffalo was forced to play the next two weeks without a Jumbotron before getting it replaced with a new one. But that isn't even the only crazy thing happened in Buffalo. I mean, at number two, the Sabres literally drafted a player that didn't exist. The Sabres front office were tired of the draft being so long, so these guys decided to troll everyone and draft a made-up Japanese player, Taro Chusumoto, as their 11th round pick. It was excruciating. I can't stand this anymore. I said, why don't we draft somebody that doesn't exist? That'll drive me crazy. Chusumoto. Well, no one ever heard of him. Of course. We vowed then not to tell anybody that it was a joke. Man, I would have wanted to see that draft with my own eyes. But something you definitely want to see is the wildest comeback in NHL history at number one. Steph and steals and he'll ice it. Oh, at least I thought he was gonna. Hemsky's loose. Hemsky, he scores. Can you believe what we just saw? It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Patrick Stephan, you should be embarrassed for what you just did. Alex Hemsky makes a remarkable move. I didn't even know it was possible to miss an empty netter that badly. But something you definitely don't want to miss are the most disrespectful moments in NHL history. Go ahead, man, click it. You touch, do you like touching guys?